The cry, Grindabo, is probably one of the most exciting words in the Faroese language, as it signals to the men that the hunt is on. Imagine a place where centuries-old traditions still rule today, where the hunting of whale is not only a way of life, but a rite of passage for young men. Welcome to the Faroe Islands, a remote archipelago of beauty and tradition, where a progressive outlook is challenged by a cultural heritage that is both revered and reviled. Join us as we explore the complexities of the Faroese whaling tradition, a practice that pits modern sensibility against deep-seated tradition. The Faroe Islands are a group of 18 volcanic islands located in the North Atlantic, halfway between Iceland and Scotland. These rugged windswept islands are dominated by steep cliffs, rolling hills and pristine fjords that drop into the sea. The landscape is dotted with small villages where the people have lived in harmony with the sea for centuries, fishing and hunting the waters to sustain their families. The Faroese people have a deep connection to their language, derived from Old Norse, which has been passed down from generation to generation for over a thousand years. It's the first language of the majority of the population, and you can hear it being spoken all around you, from everyday conversations to the media. The Faroese are described as a one-class society, with a Scandinavian social welfare and medical system in place. But against this relative economic classlessness, there does appear to be a clear gender segregation of labor, with men harvesting the birds, driving the whales, doing fishing, cutting peat, and women processing the fish for export, drying the meat, and of course, cooking. The Faroe Islands are a true enigma when it comes to politics. On one hand, they are a part of the Kingdom of Denmark, yet on the other hand, they have a high degree of autonomy and self-governance that sets them apart from other territories. It's a delicate balance, but one that has been struck through decades of hard-fought negotiations. When it comes to making a living, the Faroe Islands are all about two things. The most recent of which is of course tourism. But historically, it's all about fishing, the real lifeblood of this place for generations. Today, the vast majority of the Faroese exports, that is around 90%, consist of fishery products, with rich icy waters full of cod, herring, and of course, whale. To the casual observer from abroad, the Grindadrap must seem to be one of the cruelest forms of hunting in existence. The Faroese, who by natural temper are a kindly, hospitable, and well-educated people, admit this much themselves. But for the Faroese, hunting whales is more than just a means of putting food on the table. It's a symbol of their close connection to the sea, and a way of keeping their heritage alive. There are no fixed hunting seasons, but whale hunts are likely to happen during spring and summer periods, from June to October. When sea and weather conditions permit, there are five stages to the hunt. We have the sighting, the chase, the slaughter itself, the dance, and the whale carving and distribution. Everything begins with the cry, Grindabo. In the past, this cry was spread from village to village by a runner or bonfire. Now it is communicated by telephone or motorboat. Participation is not compulsory, but most able-bodied men cooperate in the drive. Some even abandon their office jobs in places like Tronshavn to come down and participate. Essentially any man with the skills and right tools at hand sets out to the shore in anticipation of incoming whales. First, the drive works by surrounding the pilot whales with a wide semicircle of boats. This can be tricky. The whales need to be guided towards the shore gently, without panic, otherwise this will make them swim out to the ocean. Stones attached to lines are thrown into the water behind the pilot whales to prevent their escape, and the boats drive the whales towards an authorized beach or fjord where the animals are driven to beach themselves. Once beached, the whales are meant to be ended by a single deep cut through the dorsal area made with a special whaling knife that severs the spinal cord. After the whales are confirmed to be deceased, their necks are cut open so that as much blood as possible can be drained in order to better preserve their meat. The pilot whales that are not beached were historically stabbed in the blubber with a sharp hook and then pulled ashore 
But in 1993, a blunt gaff was invented that could be used to hold the beached whales steady by their blowholes, and then pulled ashore. In 1985, they outlawed the use of spears and harpoons, as these weapons were considered to be unnecessarily cruel. And according to the 2013 whale hunt law, whales must be either ashore or stuck on the seabed before they can be lawfully ended. And as of 2017, only the men waiting on the beaches with permitted weapons are permitted to take part in the activity. Regardless, as you can imagine, the activity is quite graphic, so I dare not describe it or show it in further detail. The entire sea surrounding a whale hunt tends to turn a certain shade of red, and this vivid imagery can have a shocking effect on onlookers. In this regard, the whale hunt is not considered a tourist-friendly practice. As previously mentioned, according to tradition, there used to be a dance at the site of the event. This may have served to keep the people warm while waiting for the meat to be distributed. Nowadays, this part of the tradition has been mostly abandoned. Finally, the sheriff selects villagers who assess the size of the catch, scratch numbers on the skins to count the whales, determine how much each person or family receives, and then cut and divide the meat according to a complicated formula based on factors such as who lives on the bay, where the whales were beached, who sighted the whales, whose boats were used, and who participated. And that even includes the spectators. The meat is never sold, but only distributed to the participants. The non-commercial aspect of the whale drive is heavily emphasized by the local authorities. The main target of the Faroese whale hunt is the long finned pilot whale. In 1993, it was estimated that there were a total of 780,000 short and long finned pilot whales in the North Atlantic. And the International Union for Conservation of Nature, in its red list of threatened species, rates both species of pilot whale as of least concern and has estimated that the long finned pilot whale subpopulation around the Faroes is around 100,000 individuals and has said that the Faroese catch is most likely sustainable. The largest catch of pilot whales in a single session in recent decades was 1,203 animals in 2017. The average since 2000 has been 670. While it is quite common for outsiders to criticize the practice, 83% of the local population still support it to this day. Why is that? The exploitation of large sea mammals has long been a part of the Scandinavian way of life. In Norway, there is evidence of a heavy reliance by post-glacial hunter-gatherers on maritime economic resources. So that is three to five thousand years ago. The earliest evidence for whaling on the Faroe Islands dates back to the early days of Norse settlement, 800-900 AD, during the Viking era. After the turn of the millennium, the islanders began keeping records of their whale kills for the purpose of the taxes due to the King of Norway. Written records of whale kills survive from 1584, and the statistical records are considered reliable from 1709 to the present. In fact, it is probably one of the oldest and most detailed records of a hunting practice anywhere in the world. Whaling was so important in the 1840s that the export of whale oil was worth more than the fish. Whaling reached a sort of peak in 1909 and has been declining ever since, with it ceasing entirely in 1966. The meat and blubber of the pilot whale are a traditional part of the diet of the Faroese community and for medicinal purposes. The skin of pilot whales was once used to make fishing lines and ropes, while their stomachs were used as fishing floats. Other parts of the animals were used to make shoes. Faroese cuisine is generally dominated by the use of animal products, as only about 2% of the land of the island is at all suitable for arable crops. As a result, during the winter months, the Faroese traditionally eat mostly salted or dried food, including mutton, fish, seabirds, and the meat and blubber from sea mammals. And many Faroese place names often speak explicitly of whaling culture, such as the town of Hualvik, which means whale bay. 
Today, pilot whale meat is consumed as a Faroese delicacy and provides some 30% of the island's protein. Pilot whale hunting practice only survives in the Faroe Islands. Although historically it did occur in Newfoundland, Greenland, Orkney and Shetlands. For all intents and purposes, the Faroe Islands is a nation of whalers. Their forefathers lived and breathed the whale and today's practice is just a continuation of well over a millennium of history. So the Faroese whaling practices have been challenged by environmental organizations, most recently by the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, as being cruel and unnecessary, with critics pointing out that the suffering of the animals is not as limited as claimed. Reports on the length of time it takes the mammals to expire are extremely variable, ranging from a few seconds to tens of minutes, and that is without touching on the psychological suffering that the animals likely endure, as they are herded into the bays and ended in the presence of each other, a point heavily emphasized by the organization. Sea Shepherd has been involved in campaigning against the Faroese whale hunt since the 1980s and has stepped up its efforts in recent years. On the other hand, proponents of Faroese pilot whaling defend it as essential to Faroese culture and argue that the number of whales taken is not harmful to the general pilot whale population and the practice is environmentally sustainable. They also point to recent Faroese laws that make the hunts more humane and reduce their unnecessary suffering. Interestingly, the Faroese government had asked the Danish government to forbid Sea Shepherd from entering the Faroe Islands after their recent campaigns, but the Danish government refused. So it seems to me the Danish government is neither willing to stop the practice, nor silence voices opposing it. Either way, the practice is set to continue for a foreseeable future. I can see the point of the islanders. What they are doing is in no way worse than the mass reproduction of common farm animals who live short and likely excruciating lives. Millions are processed each day away from the eyes of the public. Perhaps if people were reminded more often about the scale of suffering created, then they would also be outraged about it. But we don't really see it. The whale pilot drive is done in public. Anyone can participate in it. And it's shocking. Therefore, for many, it's very hard to accept this form of harvest. Personally, I see them both as the same. And in my opinion, neither are acceptable. In time, humanity needs to stop processing animals for meat, as alternative options are in the pipeline. Although I'm a hypocrite, because I'm also a consumer. I think people have the right to protest the activity. But the whale pilot drive also needs to continue because the Faroese have done it for centuries and it defines their culture in the same way that a burger or a barbecue defines America. If you have no problem eating meat in general, then you should also have no problem with Faroese tradition. It's just what humans do. We all have our hands covered in blood, just as they do. Now check out my video on St. Kilda Island, the location of one of the last hunter-gatherer societies in the Western world. And this is my Patreon map. Everyone here has at some point greatly contributed to the success of my channel and I'm massively thankful. Geoperspective, out.